Hello everyone, welcome to the Tim Booker channel. I wish you a pleasant audiobook experience. Today, I'll be introducing a book called Who's Pulling Your Strings. It mainly discusses how we can identify manipulative behaviors in interpersonal relationships and how to break free from manipulation to regain control of our lives. The author of this book is Carol Devick. Harriet Brake, the author of this book, is an American clinical psychologist and management consultant. With nearly 30 years of clinical experience, he has encountered numerous patients who suffer from severe psychological issues due to interpersonal problems. Some of them experience prolonged pain, depression, and continuous stress, while others never felt the need to seek psychological help until they realized they were completely controlled by others, like puppets on strings. Based on his extensive clinical experience, the author wrote another book called The Pleasing Syndrome, which explains why some individuals habitually seek approval from others and act like people-pleasers. The term, the pleasing syndrome, was coined by the author himself. However, it doesn't end there. After the publication of this book, the author established an online website to encourage more interaction with people who tend to please others excessively. To his surprise, he received more messages seeking help in the website's comment section. The author discovered that people who seek approval are not the only vulnerable group to manipulation. Manipulative behaviors are far more prevalent than we imagine, and the process of manipulation is often secretive, like the slow onset of a chronic disease. At the beginning, it's challenging to detect, even for a psychologist like him. He has personally experienced the significant harm that manipulation can inflict on self-esteem, emotions, and mental well-being. Realizing the need to develop a set of methods to resist manipulation and help more people recognize their weaknesses in falling into manipulative relationships, the author aims to provide practical guidance on how to break free from such entanglements. This book can be considered a guide to both avoiding manipulation and self-rescue. In the following presentation, I will divide it into two parts to interpret this book for you. The first part will answer the question of how manipulation occurs, while the second part will explore which individuals are more likely to become targets of manipulation. Hello everyone, welcome to the Tim Booker channel. I wish you a pleasant audiobook experience. Today, I'll be introducing a book called Who's Pulling Your Strings. It mainly discusses how we can identify manipulative behaviors in interpersonal relationships and how to break free from manipulation to regain control of our lives. The author of this book is Carol Devick. Harriet Brake, the author of this book, is an American clinical psychologist and management consultant. With nearly 30 years of clinical experience, he has encountered numerous patients who suffer from severe psychological issues due to interpersonal problems. Some of them experience prolonged pain, depression, and continuous stress, while others never felt the need to seek psychological help until they realized they were completely controlled by others, like puppets on strings. Based on his extensive clinical experience, the author wrote another book called The Pleasing Syndrome, which explains why some individuals habitually seek approval from others and act like people-pleasers. The term, The Pleasing Syndrome, was coined by the author himself. However, it doesn't end there. After the publication of this book, the author established an online website to encourage more interaction with people who tend to please others excessively. To his surprise, he received more messages seeking help in the website's comment section. The author discovered that people who seek approval are not the only vulnerable group to manipulation. Manipulative behaviors are far more prevalent than we imagine, and the process of manipulation is often secretive, like the slow onset of a chronic disease. At the beginning, it's challenging to detect, even for a psychologist like him. He has personally experienced the significant harm that manipulation can inflict on self-esteem, emotions, and mental well-being. Realizing the need to develop a set of methods to resist manipulation and help more people recognize their weaknesses in falling into manipulative relationships, the author aims to provide practical guidance on how to break free from such entanglements. This book can be considered a guide to both avoiding manipulation and self-rescue. In the following presentation, I will divide it into two parts to interpret this book for you. The first part will answer the question of how manipulation occurs, while the second part will explore which individuals are more likely to become targets of manipulation. Next, in the second part, let's explore which individuals are more susceptible to becoming targets of manipulation. Once manipulated, how can you break free from this relationship completely? The author discovered that manipulators often target individuals who unknowingly reveal certain common weaknesses in their personalities. 
These individuals might be overly kind, easily influenced, or going through significant life changes, such as job searching, caution, heartbreak, or marriage, which creates instability. In summary, these weaknesses can be categorized into three aspects. Overly valuing others, this can manifest in the following traits. Having a habit and tendency to please others. Becoming obsessed with obtaining others' approval and acceptance. Frequently finding it difficult to say no to others. Most people in this category tend to do more of what others consider good, even if it requires sacrificing their own interests. In their minds, gaining others' favor and approval is more important. They feel guilty when they reject others and might think they are being too selfish. Neglecting oneself, this can manifest in the following traits. Having a vague self-awareness and lacking a clear understanding of their identity and personality. Often doubting their own judgments and reactions. Believing that most things in life are caused by others or external factors rather than within their control. Some individuals in this category have blurred self-perceptions due to negative childhood experiences. Others tend to rely on other people's advice to support their decision-making process, believing that seeking more advice minimizes the chances of making mistakes. However, they fail to realize that this decision-making approach is a mistake itself. Overly sensitive to negative emotions, this can manifest in the willingness to pay any price to avoid conflicts and confrontations in interpersonal relationships, including complying with manipulators' demands. For example, if a manipulator raises their voice, implying that conflict is on the verge of erupting, these individuals might feel anxious and even imagine the quarrel in their minds, whether or not it happens face to face. As a result, they succumb to the manipulator's demands. Worse still, the more they try to avoid negative emotions, the more they suppress their own boundaries, leading to increasingly lower standards for themselves. In fact, negative emotions are inherent in human nature. This means that once a person feels violated, they will naturally experience anger on a physiological level. It is not worthwhile nor possible to completely avoid negative emotions. Suppressing anger to avoid conflicts will lead to an even more unhealthy state. Constantly compromising just to avoid conflicts inevitably creates significant stress. So, how can one break free from a manipulative relationship? The author summarizes seven steps of resistance strategies in the book, providing a highly detailed account of each step, including when and how to execute them. For your ease of understanding and memorization, I have integrated the author's methods into an eight-word mnemonic, delay, repeat, tolerate, break, establish. These steps are progressive and complementary. The more steps we use to resist manipulators, the more powerful our resistance becomes. Delay, first step do not immediately agree to the manipulator's requests. Stall for time. During the initial stage, it is crucial to create a gap between the manipulator's demand and your response. Even if you have no idea yet, make sure to leave some time to break the habit of automatically complying with the manipulator's demands. In the first round, try to communicate with the manipulator through phone calls to gain some brief respite. When the manipulator makes a request, find a reason to say that you have something to attend to and need to leave for a while. If it's a face-to-face -face situation, interrupt the manipulator calmly, stating that you need to make an urgent call, get something from the office, pour a cup of coffee or fetch water, etc., taking only a few minutes to distance yourself from that environment. The manipulator will likely strongly oppose your time-delaying behavior, attempting to pressure you by raising their voice, showing signs of anger, or using various means to evoke your sense of guilt. Therefore, in the second round, when the manipulator repeats the previous demand, acknowledge that you have heard and understood their message. You can say, I know you may be surprised or angry, but I need some time to consider. Once I've made up my mind, I will get back to you. Repeat this step and do not apologize. Reiterate your need for time to think, it is your right. After saying goodbye, hang up the phone or leave the place. Remember, throughout the process, do not explain why you need time to think or what you are considering. Avoid mentioning when you will respond. Be cautious, if you start talking too much, you will lose control. Delaying is the strategy for the entire process. Regardless of how you or the manipulator feel, do not engage in debates or arguments. The manipulator may have controlled you for a long time, but you are not a puppet, you are a self-aware individual. Now, you have decided to sever the strings of manipulation. The author suggests the best way to practice this method is to write your own script and rehearse it diligently. 
By writing down scenarios that may occur in your life, you can prepare yourself and enhance your ability to maintain control. After multiple interactions with manipulators, you know what they might say when faced with refusal. Write it down and find someone to practice role-playing with you. Pay attention to your posture and the other person's eye contact, the smoothness, volume, and tone of your voice, as well as your overall performance. Through repeated practice, you will better gauge your suitable boundaries. Now, moving on to the most crucial step, tolerate, second step. You must endure certain negative emotions that make you highly uncomfortable. At this stage, both sides' negative emotions will reach their peak. However, once you endure through it, the situation between you and the manipulator will change significantly. Up to this point, the triggers for both parties' negative emotions have been too short, causing the manipulator's display of anger to ignite your anxiety, fear, or guilt immediately, leading to submission and reinforcing the manipulative cycle. So, you may wonder how to judge when to endure. Endure until the manipulator becomes impatient and vehemently says something like, if you don't agree, we're breaking up, or, if you don't do what I say, we're cutting ties. When you hear these statements, you will have a good idea. In the past, your automatic response mechanism would have adjusted to emergency mode, like a level 3 fire alarm suddenly erupting. However, in reality, the urgency doesn't truly exist, it stems from the terrifying atmosphere the manipulator creates and your excessive sensitivity to negative emotions. Even if you don't immediately calm the manipulator's anxiety, fear, or guilt they evoke in you, it won't lead to self-destruction. So, how do you handle these negative emotions in such urgent situations? The author suggests habitual practice as the best way to resist these emotions. Start by recalling at least three scenes and write them down in vivid detail, especially describing the uncomfortable language and actions. Also, describe your fear, anxiety, and guilt in detail. Then, recite these descriptions into a recording device, aiming to recreate the experience of anxiety, fear, and guilt. Next, choose a relaxing environment, lie down on a comfortable couch, and have the prepared recording device nearby. Take deep breaths and focus on your arms and legs, feeling them become warm and heavy. After two to three minutes of relaxing breathing, start listening to the first recorded scene. Throughout the process, maintain deep breathing, feel the relaxation in your limbs, and mentally relive the scene, trying to coexist with those negative emotions. After the first recording ends, firmly remember the recreated scene and tell yourself, I indeed feel uncomfortable, but I can tolerate it. By regularly connecting relaxation and scene recreation through this habit, you can confront and desensitize yourself to excessive sensitivity to negative emotions. The author suggests practicing this at least twice a day for one to two weeks, as manipulators try various means to apply pressure and evoke the now familiar feelings of anxiety, guilt, and fear. In following the suggested steps, you'll be better equipped to resist manipulation effectively. Remember, by delaying, repeating your response, tolerating negative emotions, breaking free from their influence, and establishing your boundaries, you can regain control of your life. Three breaks refers to labeling the manipulator's behavior, turning their scheme into daylight, and directly breaking off the manipulative relationship. Since you have already reached the peak of negative emotions, it's time to pierce through this layer of paper window. For a manipulative relationship, as long as the default agreement between you and the manipulator remains unchanged, their manipulative power will not change. Therefore, at this point, you need to use straightforward language to counterattack. You can precisely tell the manipulator what actions they have taken and how you feel about them. At this stage, most manipulators will retreat a step due to having their manipulation exposed. If you still find it challenging to describe the manipulator's behavior clearly or don't know how to handle a face-to-face -face situation, the author provides specific scripts that can be broken down into four parts, plus one sentence. List their manipulative behaviors. Describe your feelings about those actions. Suggest alternative ways. If they use this approach, describe how it made you feel. Give an example. For instance, if a wife is heavily manipulated by her husband, she can say, when you raise your voice and yell at me, I feel scared and anxious. If you could stop yelling and express your needs calmly, I would feel respected. You'll notice that in these first four sentences, you neither agree nor refuse the manipulator's request but explicitly state their manipulative tactics, explaining your emotional response. At least now, the manipulator knows you mean business. 
So, you pass the ball back to them to determine whether their manipulation is intentional or unconscious and whether they are willing to change. If they are unwilling to change, then you can firmly state that their tactics no longer work on you. Now, on to the final step, establish, fourth step. This step involves re-establishing the boundaries of your relationship. After all the previous efforts, it's time to set your own terms clearly within the relationship, indicating what you are willing and unwilling to do. Tell the manipulator what approaches are effective and what methods you cannot accept. Then, explore together if there is a way that both parties can accept. However, at this point, be prepared for the possibility that the manipulator only wants to continue the relationship on their terms, with them having the final say. In practical terms, your demands become a test of the relationship's value and nature. If you find that the manipulator's sole purpose for maintaining the relationship is to continue manipulating and exploiting, you must be resolute and prepared to leave, as that would be the best choice. Even if the manipulator shows willingness to change, we cannot expect this relationship to be rectified overnight. The manipulator needs time to learn new behaviors and better ways of expressing their needs. But with patience, perseverance, and determination, you can bring new hope. Alright, we have carefully analyzed the steps to break free from manipulation. Let's recap the eight-word mnemonic, delay, repeat, tolerate, break, establish. Delay for time, practice tolerating negative emotions, endure through the hardest phase, label the manipulator's behavior, and then directly break off the relationship, finally re-establishing clear boundaries. Behind each step, there must be extensive role-playing practice and mental preparation. Lastly, we have a long-term and resolute task, self-growth. We must make significant efforts to eliminate the viruses in our cognition, identify our weak spots, and become strong-minded. Throughout the book, the author provides soft thinking patterns and their corrected, assertive versions. I strongly recommend writing them down and regularly reviewing them, even reading them out loud when feeling anxious. It will greatly help alleviate negative emotions. I've selected one sentence from the book to read to you. For example, a soft thinking pattern is, I should do what others expect of me to make them happy, and the corrected, assertive version is, I know I can't please everyone and make everyone happy. It's not possible or realistic. I want others to like me for my personal qualities, not just for what I do for them. Alright, that's the essence of this book, who's pulling your strings. I've finished interpreting it for you. The author also includes numerous self-assessment questions and typical case studies. If you're interested, I recommend reading the original book. Lastly, I'd like to share some personal insights. You may have noticed that manipulation often happens because we care too much about others' feelings and fear rejection, isolation, or even being disliked. However, Alfred Adler, the founder of individual psychology, once said, being disliked is itself a form of courage. It is a stage that one must experience in the process of personal growth and an essential condition for becoming a stronger individual. Your life, aside from yourself, does not depend on what others say. Alright, that's the core content of this book. Feel free to share it with your friends, and congratulations on completing another book. Thank you for listening to the Tim Booker channel. Please subscribe, like, and share this valuable knowledge with your friends around you. Let's combine wisdom with practice and achieve our financial goals together, creating a better future. Thank you all, and goodbye.